and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we've got a debut on the channel for a constructor by the name of Angelo. Uh, now the puzzle on screen is called Archer Towers, and I've had a look at the rules and they are, well, they're very cool. Uh, they remind me of Jimi Hendrix and All Along the Watchtower, unsurprisingly, because the rules are all about watchtowers, which are these circles, these purple circles need to be. Um, very, very interesting rule set indeed, uh, and I suspect if this puzzle's any good, it could become some sort of standard variant, but we'll see about that in due course. Um, now, I'm still on a bit of an endorphin hit, actually, uh, today, because last night, very late last night it ended up being, I finally managed to solve, on camera, this puzzle, Philomeno Aquarium by Fistemafel. This is... Well, I think, as I said in the video, it's one of the best puzzles I've ever done in my life. It is absolutely extraordinary. Do have do try and carve out the time and have a go at this, because I kid you not, it is a work of sublime genius. Um, the video uh, the video is 90 minutes long, so it's not easy. It's really not easy. Um, but you can see it's, it's finally got uh, awarded both a 5 out of 5 star difficulty rating and a 100% approval rating from the 12 folk who have solved it on Logic Masters Germany. Um, this, this is just an absolute uh, gift from the gods, frankly. Gift from the puzzle god, Fistmafell. Um, and if you're a patron of the channel, if you've had a go at it and you couldn't do it, then my video solve of this is now on Patreon. So do check it out if you, if you do get stuck. Um, it, I mean, it might be worth watching the video just to watch me eulogize about it because it is, it, the way that the logic works in it is just, well, I've said it already. It's awesome. It's awesome. So check it out. Uh, you won't regret it. Um, now, the other thing I need to mention about Patreon is we're very nearly at the 20th of January. And on the 20th of January, the competition closes. So you've got one more day to get your answers for the Star Wars Sudoku Hunt by Peter C. Hayward into us. Um, and very well done. In the last 24 hours, we've had correct solutions from Dashella B., from Jacko Draaja. I might be saying your name wrong, sorry. Uh, Emma and Matt from Scott Joss. Pamela Skinner, Phoebe Stanton, Matthew Buckley, and from Jasmine Stewart. All of you have correctly solved uh, the name of the next trilogy. So very well done. It's no mean feat, actually. Those puzzles, especially towards the end, get very difficult indeed. So, so props to you all for managing to make your way through. Um, now, let's get on to Arch Tower, shall we? What are the rules? Uh, here they go. We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So that's normal rules. That means those three cells there sum up to the digit we put in that arrow circle, which is the gray circle, because each small purple circle represents a watchtower of height X, where X is the digit in that cell. So let's, uh, let's put a, a digit in there. Let's make this digit a six. And let's find out what this means. Um, each watchtower must see exactly X cells, including itself, in its row and column combined. Watchtowers cannot see digits larger than their own height, nor pass them. Not all watchtowers are given, but cells with purple squares must not be watchtowers, and they must therefore see more or less than X cells. So, if this watchtower cell was a six, that is telling us that it's a bit like a skyscraper's clue, I think, in four directions. Um, I'm going to struggle to make this work. I'll have a go, though. If we made that a nine, one, two, three, and we made these squares five, four, three, and we made that square seven, which will break that arrow, but ignore that for a moment. One, two, three, four. Let's say this square's a one. One, two, three, four, five. So we've still got to see one more from this six. So let's make that a five and that an eight, which I admittedly is breaking this arrow as well. So I'm breaking all sorts of rules from the puzzle, but I think the watchtower rule is correct for this, uh, this six now. Because this six would see the three, it's higher than the three. It would see the four, it would see the five. It, would, it couldn't see past the nine, so anything over here is bad and it couldn't 
obviously it's not treated as seeing the nine itself because the nine towers over it it would see the one so it would see those cells it would see the five which is lower than it one two three four five six so that would be a correct formulation of this watchtower clue um, which is very interesting it's like putting skyscrapers into the grid um, I don't know if anyone's thought of this before but Angelo well done you seem to have come up with something very original do have a go at the puzzle I've got no idea how hard it is you'll have to guess that from the length of the video um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now I get to play let's get cracking now let's get cracking now for once I can see I've got some generous arrows here yeah I've got lots of generous arrows is that yes I have got lots of generous arrows what do I mean by a generous arrow well I mean an arrow like this one where all three digits on this arrow have to be different because they're all in the same column of the Sudoku so the minimum I could put on this arrow here would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is 6 and that's the same there and it's the same for that one those three digits are all in the same box so that cell that cell and that cell have to be at least six um, now what do we do with that knowledge we shall um, don't know do we have to think about watchtowers already um, let me just think about watchtowers generically what right a one, if you put a one in a watchtower isn't that saying it's correct or just automatically correct because every digit on either side of it will be greater than it so it would be a correct clue it would be saying it just sees its own cell so that means that that means you can put one in watchtowers, but presumably you can't put one in squares then. Because if you put a one in a square, it will be, it would be a correct watchtower, and that's wrong, because these need to not be watchtowers. So we can't put, ah, right. So we can't put one in this square. But we can presumably put one in, oh no, sorry, that's, well, I think it's true to say that this cell on this arrow here can't be a one. But that doesn't prevent there being a one on the arrow so we can't say this is two three four adding up to nine because that won't work um oh but hang on Ooh, right that square is not nine because that's a watchtower cell and if it's nine it must see everything in its row and everything in its column because it's bigger it's the biggest daddy of all isn't it so that's if we're going to go all along the watchtower in row one and all along the watchtower in column nine we'll definitely get to a number that's bigger than nine so that's that's getting rid of some of the confusion there must be too much confusion um, but not in that cell that cell is not nine so that's six seven or eight that means there's a one on the arrow um, right that means there's one on the arrow and if this is eight, that's fine, isn't it? I think, because all that's saying is that there's a nine somewhere in row one, and then there's a nine somewhere in column nine that just frame it so that this sees one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, it would, I think it would look something like that. That would be fine. You could put a nine here and a nine there, and that would work so uh, we know there's a one on this arrow we know it's not in this in the square so that's good you can't uh, you can't put a nine in that cell either that's a watchtower look there's a little circle inside the gray cell that, or the gray circle there so that's not nine either it's quite interesting this rule actually yes yes well that's not six because if it's six, we've got to put one, two, three on both arrow strings. And this six will definitely see digits one, two, and three, because they're all lower than it. And that would make this six at least a seven. Doesn't matter what you put in those squares or these squares. 
it's already seen seven cells, so that's not six. This is cool as, isn't it? It's very interesting. So now, this is reduced to being seven or eight. If it was seven, it would have to be one, two, four. Golly, it would be huge. It would be amazing if this was seven, look. Because if that's seven, it would see all of its arrow cells, which would be one, two, and four. And then it would have to be Oh, it's not eight. Right, <laughs> I understood it. Right, this is seven. But let me complete that chain of thought. If that's seven, it sees seven cells there. And it has to be framed. It has to be surrounded in its row and its column by eights and nines to ensure it only sees seven. And that's beautiful. And it looks like it's possible. But it, it is possible. And indeed, it's correct. Because how could eight ever work? How could 8 ever work? The only digit that can stop the 8 from seeing the whole of its row and the whole of its column is a 9. And that surely means... It, well, the 8's definitely... Oh, hang on. I might, I might be wrong about this, actually. I was thinking that I can't put two 9's in the... In the in, in the row and the column, but I'm just thinking I might be able to get away with this. Let me think about this. If this is eight, it's definitely going to see all of these cells for sure. And it's only allowed to see one more cell. So it could see that cell. And then there would have to be a nine here. Oh, hang on, that, that breaks, because then I have to put a 9 there as well. That's no good. Okay, so it can't see this cell. So that cell needs to be a 9. But but now, no, that, it is broken. It is broken. Yeah, okay. You, the, basically, the, there is a problem to do with the number of 9s we can put in a row or a column. So my instinct was right, but I was just getting a bit confused about these cells. But let, let's let's do this slowly. So... If we try and put an 8 here, we have, to st we have to allow this 8 clue to take exactly one more cell. So it can't take both of those cells. That would be impossible. So one of these must be a 9. So let's make it this one. Once this is a 9, this cell is definitely seen for sure by the 8 because it can't be, an, it can't be a 9. So that has to turn blue. That completes the 8. So the 8 now must get no more cells, but that means there must be two 9s in those squares. And you get a double 9 here, and double 9 in the column, and the whole world falls apart. So, so we can actually say, I think, with confidence, that this square can now only be a 7. And that's going to be massive, because now we've got to put 1, 2, 4 on the arrows. That's the only way of making 7 in 3 cells. We've got to stop the 7 seeing these two cells, so they must be an 8-9 pair. And we've got to stop the 7 seeing those two cells, so they must be an 8-9 pair. What a beautiful idea this is, isn't it? It's really clever. Um, aha! It is really clever. It's even more clever, because what do we know about that, these two digits? Well, we know they're different. And if these are different, what do we know about those two? These, sorry, these two digits, they are different as well. And if these are different, one of them is an eight, and therefore that cell in the corner can't be an eight anymore. Because if it was, both of these would be nine, and both of those would be eight. Isn't that beautiful? So that's a six or a seven. So there's now a two on this arrow as well. So it's either one, two, three, or it's either one, two, three, or one, two, four. And we can't put, what was the digit we can't put in the square? We can't put the one in the square. Um, although, I'm now wondering whether you can put even, can you even put two in the square? Because if you put two in the square, there must be a one next to it. And wherever that one goes, isn't, isn't it going to correct the count for this two? Yes, it is. This is this is lovely as well. So this square can't be a two. Because if it is a two, 
you, you've got to put one in one of those wherever the one goes the two has now got the correct count so this is bad for the watchtower the watchtower must see another cell as well well it can't see that because that's going to be higher than t higher than two it can't see those two because they're they're obviously also higher than two because one and two have disappeared from the box that's beautiful right so this square is not two which means it's three or four and these have to be a one two pair in box three can we keep going with this can this now be three no it can't this is ridiculously clever if this is three these two squares are definitely seen by the three because it's bigger than them but these two squares are definitely higher than three and that would mean the three was correct which is not allowed to be so that's a four and that's a seven. Oh no it doesn't do anything with our eight nine pairs obviously um wow okay all right um, um so right we need to what do we need to do now then we've got quite a lot of real estate done in column five and row five so we need what is it three five and six in both of these triples which might put pressure on this digit perhaps uh, if this was a six this would have to be one two three in both directions so you get one two pairs into those dominoes which might be possible um, Uh, okay, sorry, I'm not seeing what I have to do next. It's actually really, this, this anti-watchtower is a weird cell, because that cell was really useful. But I was just thinking about this one, and this one's all but useless, because all you're saying is that whatever you put into that cell its watchtower total must be wrong. Well, it's quite hard for its watchtower total to ever be to be right. I mean, if you just fill this with a random digit that isn't one, it's really difficult to make it correct. Is it this digit then? So this, ah, this digit can't be seven, eight, or nine. So, Okay, so whatever this is, it sees no digits in these two squares because it's got to be lower than, it's got to be, say, a six or something like that. If it was a six, which I think is the highest it can be, it sees nothing here and nothing here because the eight and the nine are higher than it. So it would see some combination of digits. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, but these are arrow cells. So actually, they are likely to be lower than this digit and therefore seen. So maybe the challenge here is to put a low digit into this cell. Um, hmm, not doing very well with this. What about that cell? That's on the end of an arrow, but can't be, can't be a one because although, oh no, it can be a one. Ah, I'm going mad. Is it a... No, because this is not a square. I'm getting, now, now I'm getting confused between squares and circles. Circles can be the digit 1. Because if the circle was a 1, it would be surrounded by higher digits and it would just see itself, which is correct. So that can be a 1. That would put... Oh, no, it can't be a one. Oh, right, good good grief. Right, no, that's not a one, actually. But not for anything to do with the watchtower nature of it, but to do with where you put an eight into one of those squares. If this is one, one of these two squares has to be an eight. And whichever one it is, let's say it's this one, it forces eight out of this square and into that one, which is on its arrow. And one plus eight does not equal eight. And that would work the same way if you try and put the eight here. 
So that square is not 1. So maybe this is more restricted. Um, oh, it is. Ah, this. Right, right, I see. I see. This square. Oh, it's a horrible colour to shade it in. I'll, I'll use blue. Yes, I can see that. Right, this square is absolutely... It's massively restricted in a way I hadn't appreciated because we've got 3, 5, 6 seeing the second digits on the arrow cells. So, so oh, this is why 2 doesn't work here. Because if 2 was there, one of those squares must be a 6 because one of these squares must be an 8. But neither of these squares can be a 6. And the same is true for 3. If you put 3 in here, one of these squares must be a 5 to add to 8, and neither can be. If you put 4 in there, that's impossible as well, because one of these must be a 9, and you have to put a 5 into one of those squares. 5 in here. No, because you have to put 3 into one of those, because one of these adds up to 8. And one of these is an 8. 6. No, because one of those must be a 3 to make the 9 we need in those two squares. Oh, this is so clever. 7. Ah, so, no, 7 works, actually, I think. If that's a 7, you've got to put a 1-2 pair into those two squares. What's wrong with that? If that's a 7... Um, oh, well, it is 7. OK, if that's a 7, it is a 7. And the reason it's a 7 is what happens if you put an 8 here. Well, you've got a big problem with the 8 there. You've got to put a 0 into one of those squares. So 7 was actually the last option, and I failed to spot that. Right, so this is 7, and this is a 1-2 pair. And yes, I am a total numpty. Um, now, what does that... So that means that's not 7. Which, actually, I could have seen... I could have seen before again. Gosh, my brain is not working. I blame Vistamafel. Um, yeah, because obviously ni neither of these squares could be a 1, 2 or a 4, which would have been necessary if we put a 7 in this in this circle. Um, okay. So, <laughs> what does that mean? That means we have learnt about... There's no watchtower in this square. Oh, is it the what? This is... is that, that's a watchtower, isn't it? I'm getting confused now because I've coloured it in. But I think it has got a circle in it. Let me just check. Yeah, okay, better get rid of the colouring. That's got... that's a watchtower. So this needs to see seven cells. And at the moment it sees five cells. But does it see those two squares on those arrows as well? Yeah, it must do. Yes, it must do, because obviously on a three cell arrow, the highest digit you can put in is a six. So these two are definitely seen by the seven. Which takes it up to account. Oh, this is really, this is so clever, honestly. So now, this watchtower cell is already seeing seven because it sees these two arrow cells, which can must be lower than seven. These cells, which seem to have to be lower than seven. So now this has got to be framed with eights and nines again in order to stop it growing any larger. Oh, look! And now I've got an eight nine pair in box seven, so that's a six. Oh, good grief. So these are threes and these are one, two pairs and the whole world is coming into order. So threes come out of all these little cells. I better get rid of the colouring as well, shouldn't I? Because I think there's a danger with, uh, with colouring that I'm not going to either see arrows or watchtowers. So those three squares now are a three, four, five triple to complete the box. Where does three go in the yeah? Where does three go in the box? That's a simple question. Ah, and that's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, very cool. Um,
Not of me, I hasten to add, of Angelo. Now. No, I have never been cool, I'm afraid. Never, ever. Um, now, but that's okay. We live, we live, we live in a time when the nerd is having his or her day. Um, hmm. Okay, so now what do I do? This was going quite... Maybe... Okay, maybe this watchtower now has become interesting. Because obviously... Yeah, this can't be a 3 now. Well, it obviously can't be a 1 or a 2 by Sudoku. It can't be a 3 or a 4. Because it sees those squares for definite and it must see itself. So this square is at least a 5, but can't be a 7, 8 or a 9. That's a 5 or a 6. So, it see, and it already sees 5. So, if it was a 5, these would both have to be greater than 5. Which unfortunately looks eminently possible. Um, hmm. Maybe we've got to. Maybe we've got to appease pencil mark and actually pencil mark the boxes because I have got a quintuple in both of these boxes now. So the other digits, which are the same in both cases, are four, seven, eight, and nine. Although that was a bad idea, perhaps. I'm not actually... No, sorry. I thought that might actually tell us something about the world, but apparently not. Ah. Right, well, it... Yeah, okay. Okay, fair play. Pencil mark was right in this case, because... Yes. How could this be a five? Answers on a postcard, please. Yeah. Or Agabmata style. Pause the video. I'll give you a few seconds. Um, no, this can't be a five. Because if it's a five, neither of those squares is a four. And that means that the four in box four is in this domino. And the four in box eight is in this domino. And that is a problem for box five, which now can't have a four in it at all, because the fours would sort of be pinching, it, pinching these this side of, of, of the box, and none of those squares can be a four, so that can't be a five. Um, I re actually, I really like that step as well. That's a re This is just a quality puzzle. So that's a six which means one of these is now a four, and that's important because we, we, we therefore get out of the four problem. So one of these is a four, which is gonna put, so if that's a four, you get a four here, and if that's a four, you get a four here. Yes, okay, so in, in column one and row nine, there's always a four in one of these two cells, so neither of those squares can be a four now. Yeah, all right, and that means that the four in box eight is in one of those two cells, and the four, therefore, in box four is in one of those two cells. Now, does that... Right, that does do something to this square, which can now no longer be a four, because if you put a four here, that's telling you your four in box eight is here and your four in box four is there, and now you can't put a four in box seven. So that's not a four. This square here must be one, two, three, or five. But it can't be a one because one corrects the counts, doesn't it? That would make this a correct watchtower. So this is two, three, or five. Now, can it be two? If it's a two, it needs to see a one. No, no, it mustn't see just a one in one direction. You know, so yeah, this is what I said before. This is totally and utterly open, isn't it? The only way it would, if that's a two, actually, then you couldn't have. 
Well, if you had a one here, you'd have to have another one somewhere else in order to stop this being correct. OK, so maybe if, it, if it's a two, there is a restriction on the cell, but it doesn't need to be a two. It could be a five. And if it's a five, you just have to make sure it doesn't see exactly five cells in two directions, which strikes me as quite easy to achieve. So maybe we do pencil mark the rest of this box. Oh no, it's five pencil marks, which I normally insist is... No, I'm not doing it. I refuse. Um, sorry. Okay, so what do we do next? We shall. Sudoku? Ones and twos, maybe? I've got to put one and two in these squares. Ah, I can't put it there because look, there's a one two pair here. If we use this four, get rid of that square, one two pair, bingo. Right, so that's a one two pair in box one. So this cell now, what have we got as the options? It's got a co, it can't be one, two, or three, or four, so that's at least five. And I'm now, I'm now pencil marking five different options into this square, which I just said I wouldn't do. Um, yeah, this is tricky though, isn't it? That square is interesting though, because that also sees one, two, three, four, and six. So that square's five, seven, eight, or nine. Ah, right, this is, this is important, I think, because that can't be five now. Because if it's five, it'll only see those three squares. This is definitely greater than five. And if this is five, that's definitely greater than five. So that's now six, seven, eight, or nine, which is almost getting interesting, but not quite bobbins. Um, now, if that's six, that's six it's got to see past the if this is six you have to see this cell because it's only seeing three in the column so that would have to be a five and then it would need to see this cell one two three four five. Oh right there no this is lovely this is lovely that's not six i don't even have to look at this square the reason it's not six it's because you can't get to a count of six. It's impossible because you're definitely going to include those two in the count. You can include this one. You'll need to include this one. So you're now at a count of four. You've got to take exactly this square and exactly this square to get to a count of six. But that means this needs to be higher than six and it's clearly not. So that is just not six. This is a stunning idea, this puzzle. Now, now I've got a seven, eight, nine triple in this column, so that square's got to be a four, which means that ah, ah, so that's a four. That meant something. We were doing things with fours. Okay, it gets us a four and a five down here, which gets us a four here, which gets rid of a four there, which gets rid of a four there. Four in this box needs to be in one of those two cells by Sudoku of all things. Five. Um, come on, let's see if we can just eke out a little bit of extra information. Oh look, I've got a seven, eight, nine triple now at the end of row eight. I've also got a seven, eight, nine triple in row nine now i'm worried that's been there for a while sorry if it has been i haven't i've only just noticed it um so these squares oh it's the same it's symmetry look this four is ruling itself out of there i've got a one two pair in this column so that's not a one or a two so i've got five or a six in this watchtower making a five six pair in the bottom row so those squares aren't five or six so this is a one, two pair. And that sort of feels like it's the same as the one, two pair in box one. Although it hasn't, this one we've got a five or a six. Oh, that's weird. Why is that there? 
why is this watchtower here? Or and this anti-watchtower here? Because it can't ever be filled. I can only ever see three there because this is definitely higher and that's definitely higher. I'm, I don't I don't understand. So that's that's something I'm now worried I've made a mistake. Uh, don't know. Don't know. Let's... Well, what do we need to do then? Is it the short stubby arrows? Let's have a think about what we've got in row 7. We've got 3s, 4s, 5s and 6s to place in those squares. That can't be 4. Oh yeah, look, that can't be 6 now either because this cell gets transposed directly into this cell because of the arrow. So 6 sees that square. So that's 3 or 5. Let's just have a look at that. Um, not sure whether we can do better than that. I can't, I can't immediately see how to, which probably means there is a fairly simple Sudoku way of, of ruling something out of that cell. Is this one the same then? Does that work the same up here? So we let's look at these squares. One, two. Yeah, okay, so we've got three, four, five, and six again into these cells. That's not four. Uh, yeah, and this six does exactly the same job. That's really cool. So that's a three or a five. So these are the same. And these are the same. But does that mean... I'm just wondering if it's possible for, let's, if this was double five, say, is it also possible for that to be double five? Or is that going to do something horrible somewhere? Um, it would put a five here. Yeah. So if these were the same, it would mean there would be four of that digit looking at box three, and that would have to be the same digit, which is three or five. That actually looks possible doesn't it so maybe maybe these can be the same not sure um i am not sure so now where do we look <laughs> um come on simon what do we do now we must look at Um, seven. Okay, the seven comes out of there. There's an eight nine pair in the final column and a one two pair. So these squares are threes, fours, fives, and sixes. That one's not four. And ah, this one isn't four either using our pencil marks. So three, five, six, six yes. Oh, that's strange. Why couldn't I see that a different way? I don't know why not, but if the question we could ask is where four goes in the final column. It can only go in one cell, I think. So that's a little interesting. Now, is that the same then in this row using some weird symmetry or other? The answer is, that's not a 4, that's not a 4. The f yeah, it is. Look, where does 4 go in the top row? Can't go here by Sudoku, can't go there, and can't go there. So I think it can only go here. So that's a 4. Um, oh, look at column 1. There's a 5 here, so that's got to be a 6. So there is more Sudoku to do, as usual. Um, although, oh, although, although to be slightly fair to myself, for once, that doesn't seem to... Oh no, it has. Look, it does do things. It does do things. Forgive me. Oh look, we get a 6 here. I was about to say it didn't do anything, but it actually is doing loads of things. That's a 6 now threes, fours. How many fours have we got in the grid? The answer is loads. We need... Yeah, this square's a four because we've got the one, two pair in this row. 
So we've got four and one of those two squares, and we've got one, two, three. Yeah, we've got seven fours placed and two fours to place in this two by two. Okay, well that's okay. That's not a disaster, is it? These squares have got to be fives, sevens, eights, and nines, and that's not seven by Sudoku. What about that one? Can we do better on this one? The answer apparently is no. We shall... Hmm, okay. We've got a three, five pair here. Um, so three is in one of those three positions. As, uh, there's two watchtowers I've not even looked at yet. So perhaps that would be a sensible thing to focus on. What are the options for this one? It can be three, I think. Um, can it be, it can't be four. Five, I think it could be that. Can it be six? No, can't be seven. Eight and nine, perhaps. So three, five, eight, and nine into this cell. Uh, if it's three, it would not see these two digits. So that would be, it needs to see a one or a two there and a one or a two there, both of which look not impossible. Um, which is a worry, isn't it? So we not I've not understood something about this for sure. What about, okay, maybe we do have to look back at the central box then. We've got one, two, three, four, and five. I can see we've got one, two pairs there and there. So three, four, and five into those cells. That This three looks at that square. So now this square is only four or five. So three is definitely in one of those two cells. Three, four, or five. Ah, look, that square there can't be a four of all things because of this four. So now there's a three, five pair here. These squares are seven, eight, and nine. Wow. Okay. So, no. Uh, okay, so we've got a seven, eight, nine triple in box six now. These squares have got to be ones, twos, threes, and fives. Oh, this is beautiful. Yeah, look at this square. It sees a one, two pair. So that's got to be a three or a five. And that's got to be a one or a two. Now I've got a three, five pair in column eight. So that's not three or five anymore. So this watchtower is eight or nine. Oh, and you can't put nine. You can't put nine in a watchtower. If you put nine in a watchtower, you see the whole of the column and the row. So that is an eight out of absolutely nowhere. Wow. Okay. So that means we can get rid of eight here. And we've got to count this, don't we? So we've got, so this eight sees one, two, three, four, five, six for sure. So it definitely sees those cells could see this one if this square here was a seven and if it did that it would need it would see that one as well so it would reach it would reach a count of eight and that would be a nine and that would work rather nicely so that is one possible arrangement of of the eight now if that was a nine yeah this is gorgeous this is gorgeous it can't be a nine because if it's a nine this eight needs to pick up exactly two more cells in this direction. But the problem is, although it could absolutely see these two cells, it will see that one as well, which needs to be higher than it and can't be. So the eight is actually, this is going to give us a nine. Look at this. Yeah, this is so clever. Right, so this square is not nine. It needs to be seven. That makes that square nine, that square eight, that square seven, that square nine, that square eight. Um, the, the eight sees these two now, which is perfect. Mustn't see this square. The only way it doesn't see this square is if it's a nine. That seems to require me to put a three by Sudoku here. They become fives. These were different. Look at that. They weren't the same. 
That 5 is seeing a 6 here, so that's a 6 and a 5. That's now a 3. That's a 3. That's a 3. And all of a sudden, this 8 is seeing 8 and 9 in the middle. 8 and 9. That's going to allow us to work on the 1s and 2s, isn't it? Because now that must be 1. That's a 2. That's a 1. That's a 2. 1, 2. Um... Can't see if we can improve on that. We probably can somehow. That's not eight anymore. This is a six. This this clue's perplexing me though. Why is that here? It definitely doesn't do anything. Uh, well, if I've made a mistake and we have to unwind, we're going to unwind to the point at which we 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 could we made that deduction. Um, right. These are a five six pair. One of those is in a watchtower as well, so we need to bear that in mind. This square here is not 9. Um, can we, 9 here means we get an 8 in the top row. So that square now is 5 or 9. Can we keep this going, or is it about to... Are we about to run out of road with this I, I can't see there might be some more sudoku we can do here i'm not spotting what it is and apologies if you are um well, the top row maybe i've got a one two pair as well as all these other digits so this square has got to just be five six or nine okay well that looks useless so probably we need to look at this square so this square definitely sees those two squares to its right definitely doesn't see this square. So this square is seeing three, and if it's a six, it's seeing that square. So if it's a six, it's seeing one, it's seeing four, and this square would have to be higher than it. So if this is a six, this needs to be a seven or a nine by Sudoku. And if this is a five, that will be a six, so it won't be seen. So it will see those three squares. Oh, yeah, this is lovely. Right, so whether this is five or six, these two squares need to be seen by this watchtower. So that square's got to be... Oh, look at this, it's a one or a two, or maybe a five. Ah, no, maybe the... Yeah, I was about to get really excited, but I think... Actually, I might have been being premature. If this can only be one or two, it's huge. You can see what it's going to do. It's going to do all sorts of things. But if this is a six, if this is a six, oh no, hang on, it can't. Oh, right. Why don't I do Sudoku? I've got one and two in the row already. So that can't be one or two or three or four. So its only option is to be five in order to be less than the six there and correct the count. So that's a nine. This is a six. That's a two. That's a one. That's a two. That's a one. That's a four. That's a four. That's a five. And all of a sudden, I think the puzzle might be about to tumble here. This square here is a seven by Sudoku. We've got to put nine here. Seven here. Eight, nine pair at the bottom of the grid. What's resolving this? Can't see. Um, now, I just want to double check that this digit is seeing the correct number of cells. It's seeing the five above it. It's seeing the four and the one. It's seeing itself. It's seeing the five. It's seeing that square. So that six is seeing six. Yes, it is. It really is. It really is. I'll actually orange it. It's definitely seeing those cells. Um, now, can we keep this going, therefore? That square can't be a 9. I've just realised I could have worked that out by the fact you can't put 9s in watchtowers. Um, OK, something now must disambiguate the 1s and the 2s. And is it this watchtower that's going to do it? So this cell sees... So if that's 7... We see one, two, three. You'd have to see this. I oh, know it's not seven. It just can't be seven. You can't. You can't. In fact, I'm now worried it can't be eight, but it definitely can't be seven. If we put seven in there, 
it will see those three cells and that one possibly and that one maximally. So it only sees five. So it's eight, I think. Now that means that it definitely sees one, two, three, four. It needs to see this. So that would make this a seven. And then that would be a nine. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is working. So that is eight. That is seven. And that nine is giving us an eight here, look. So that does those digits and these digits done. Oh, this one is doing some work. I was wondering how we were going to do the ones and the twos, but they were already done and I hadn't realized. So that's a seven, that's a five, and that's the puzzle, I think. Yay, we did it. Not easy. I mean, it's taken me 50 minutes, probably 45 minutes after my chuntering at the start. Um, but yeah, there's just so much to admire in this. There really is. It is really beautiful that these three cell arrows can force so much once you put a watchtower in the middle of the, of the arrow circle. And there were lots of lovely moments. This being a six was beautiful. This digit was absolutely beautiful. The way that you could you could force this not to be a five because a five would have forced fours into those strings of digits and broken the middle box. I mean, it's really, really, really good puzzle. Angelo, take a bow and thanks for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.